It is Hockey Night at the Rochester Institute of Technology as the hometown Tigers wrap up their two-game set with Bentley University here at the Gene Policini Center. Number 23, Darren Brady had a goal last night for RIT. He's one of three freshmen on that blue line that have seen their playing time increase dramatically over the last month because of the absence of the Norwich Twins. You are watching RIT Sports Zone pregame live presented by Taylor the Builders. There's plenty to get to over the next half hour, including highlights, live interviews, and a jersey retirement for an all-time great here at RIT. Good evening, I'm Kevin Roach. We're so glad you could join us here tonight for RIT Sports Zone pregame live. We welcome our viewers watching online and throughout Western New York on Time Warner Cable. If you have been following the RIT hockey program over the year, you know that the last month the storyline has been the rash of injuries that have plagued this Tiger roster. Let's get you caught up on it. Once again, Chase Norrish is out for the season with a lower body injury. His brother Brady will not dress again tonight as he has now missed a month of action with an upper body injury. Ryan Cooper re-aggravated his injury in practice the other day, so he remains sidelined as do Todd Skirving and Alex Perron-Fontaine. Last night, the Tigers looked to snap a three-game slot against a Bentley team they swept earlier this year. First period, Falcons would strike first on the power play where they have been red hot as of late. Jonathan Dabian gets behind the Tigers' defense and puts it over Mike Rotolo's shoulder. Bentley had a 1-0 lead. All right, you'd have their chances. Garrett McMullen, a couple of good looks in front. Can't get it to go. Max Makowski's backhander would go wide. Mike Rotolo would keep the Tigers in it. Max French on the breakaway here, and Rotolo stops the backhander to keep it a one-goal game after the first. Second period, Tigers, oh, they've come alive. Matt App, the shot, Caleb Cameron, the rebound as he lifts it up and over Aiden Polino. His sixth on the season to tie us at one. Less than two minutes later, Abbott Gerduckis with his head up, he finds Darren Brady, who gives the Tigers the lead. Thanks to his third goal on the year, RIT was up two to one. Controversy late in the period. Bentley's Tyler Doreski appears to interfere right there with Mike Rotolo as Rotolo loses his stick and Bentley puts in the rebound for the goal. RIT says, wait a minute, they call timeout. They ask for a review as they challenge it, but after review, it would be upheld and the game would be tied at two after two, a tough break for the Tigers right there. Third period, Bentley on the power play again. They cash in, Drew Cullen deflects it by Rotolo. Bentley two for two on the power play. Falcons with at least one power play goal in six of their last seven games. They RIT would get a power play, but look at Aiden Polino. He was blocked in front, but still snags it for his save. 34 on the night for him last night. Then final seconds, multiple chances for RIT. Caleb Cameron had one in front, couldn't get a stick on it. And then late Cameron all alone, but he would lose his footing in the final seconds as time expires. The Tigers lose their season high fourth straight by a final of three to two. Definitely think it's frustrating. Obviously, we gotta just keep pounding away at the puck here, and you know, stick to the simple things. I think you know, throughout the weeks here, you know, it's definitely been hard on us, but I think we know deep down that we are better than this, so we just gotta keep going. Yeah, I think uh, we just gotta be more desperate, going to the net hard, and just getting pucks and getting our stick down hard, like beating other guys to the net. That's just all it takes. Just the will to win the game, and that's what we're lacking right now. You look at the injuries, and we've talked about it the last few weeks now, four straight losses. Things are getting really tight. The season's winding down. How much does this stretch test the heart of this team? Uh, definitely. It's huge for us, um, especially with the injuries. We're definitely missing some key guys, but that gives opportunity for other guys to step up. Um, you know, down the stretch here, if we can just, you know, keep getting, you know, a few wins here and there, um, I definitely think we're good enough to get some sweeps here. So uh, we just got to, you know, keep pounding away and hope for some wins here. I mean, it's a huge, huge test for us. Uh, you know, we got to have some good character here, and you know, you can't let losses get you down. And hopefully, we can come back with the win tomorrow night and get things going in the playoffs. And so, as I mentioned, RIT has now dropped four straight in conference for the second time this season. They also lost four in a row back in early November. Tigers once again out shooting their opponents, but they just haven't been able to find the back of the net. At one point in December during this season, they were among the nation's top offenses, averaging just under four goals a game. They have dropped down now and are averaging just under three per outing. It has been a tough month in Tiger Nation as RIT has now won just two games in their last seven. John DiTullio standing by with the head coach of the Tigers, Wayne Wilson, 
who's hoping to prevent this current losing streak from reaching a season high five games here tonight. John? No doubt about it, Kevin. Hey, Wayne, your team has been struggling in terms of wins. What's the message as you hit the ice and pretty much a must win against Bentley? Well, for us, we've got to stick with it. You know, I don't think we've played poorly, but we haven't uh, fought through to the other side type of thing. Uh, we've got to be a little bit more desperate than what we are right now to get the goal or prevent the goal because uh, we're teetering. We're in every game, and, and you just got to be with the exception of one. Uh, we've been in every game, but uh, we've got to find a way to, to, to get the, uh, the go ahead or get it from uh, one goal to two goal spread uh, or prevent a goal. And uh, our penalty killing has got to show up as well. You mentioned the penalty kill. Injuries certainly you can use as, a, as an excuse, but what's been the other problem? What's been the major problem, with, certainly with the penalty kill? The penalty kill, is, it's, it's been different things every game. It hasn't been a schematic type of uh, problem where anything's been uh, a common problem. You know, last night we killed really well in the zone. Uh, we've actually, as we've tracked things, we've cleared the puck 34 of 37 times successfully. Uh, but we give up a long pass and a, and a rush and a, and a wrister to the net that does deflect. Uh, and we've got to get some of those bounces ourselves. And you've got to work hard to get bounces. You've got to work hard to win hockey games. And, and we're knocking on the door, but we're not there yet. So, you know, we've just got to stick with what we're doing and just do it a little bit better uh, than what we're doing and uh, you know, hopefully get a win out of it. You've kind of had to switch some things. Frustrating because of the injuries. You've kind of had some makeshift lines out there. Well, we've had to adjust. I mean, we lost uh, the two Norris brothers, obviously, on defense. Uh, both all league players. One was uh, voted the, the top defenseman in the league. They power anchor our, our number one uh, power play unit. I think the power play was actually pretty good last night. We generate some offense, and like I said, uh, we uh, entered. We were six for six in our entries, which sometimes you have problems with that. There's some pauses with that. I, but I think uh, power play plays are just missed opportunities if you don't score. Penalty kill, if, you, if you, you mess up on that, it goes up on the score clock, and we've got to do a better job. Uh, block shots, find ways to block shots. I, I think we're getting in lanes, but we're not as desperate to block the shots. If they move their feet, we've got to adjust to it as well. So there's all those type of things that we're looking for, and uh, uh, I think just a positive attitude tonight. We've got to come out with a lot of energy and get the ball rolling right off the get-go get like we did last night. And last night, uh, we didn't score. We need to get some goals in the first period when we played so well and uh, we end up being down one uh, going into the period when we should have been up one or two goals uh, instead. So we've got to fix that. All right, Wayne, thanks so much. Good luck tonight against Bentley. That's head coach Wayne Wilson for a preview of the Bentley Falcons. Let's send it over to Stacy Pension. Stacy. Yeah, thanks, John. On the flip side of things, RIT has been really struggling with the penalty kill. I'm joined by head coach, uh, Bentley head coach Ryan Soderquist, and you guys have really been thriving on the power play. Last night, you scored two for two, and you really have something going here at the Policini. You've won, I think, three in a row here at the Policini, obviously yes. looking for another one. Yes, we were uh, very fortunate last night. I thought our power play did a nice job being two for two. Since Christmas break, we came back, we've been running about 35% on the power play. Uh, so we've been very strong in that area lately. Are you planning on sort of relying on that again tonight or what, what's your game plan tonight? No, our game plan is to play one period at a time. I thought that we did a good job with that last night. I thought, you know, each period we came out last night, RIT had a big push right to start and then we answered. So we just want to take it one period at a time. RIT's really been peppering your goalie with some, uh, you know, good shots, but your goaltending has been phenomenal, a young goalie at that. Yes, Aiden did a great job last night. I think we did a really good job keeping them to the outside. We gave them a lot of perimeter shots and did a good job of cleaning up second chance opportunities. So we don't mind giving up the, uh, the shots as long as they're uh, from outside. Right. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Back to you, Kevin. All right, Stacey, thank you so much. Well, as we mentioned last night, the Atlantic hockey standings are as tight as they've ever been. Canisius is on a roll and they have now won five straight after pulling off a sweep of AIC today. They're two points ahead of Air Force at the moment. Air Force hosts Army tonight. RIT now tied for six with Holy Cross. Bentley hoping to pull into a tie with the Tigers with a, another win here tonight. Well, still to come on the program, RIT honored one of its finest hoop players in the history of the program here today. Oh, everybody's excited about it. Plus, the RIT women's hockey team hope to break out the brooms against Lindenwood. Highlights are on the way. You're watching RIT Sports Zone pre-game live.
Welcome back to RIT Sports Zone pregame live. It is RIT Sports Zone night at the Policini Center. The first 1,000 fans here tonight receiving a Sports Zone drawstring bag on their way into the game. Well, the RIT women's hockey team has been playing its best hockey since the calendar flipped to the new year. Today they went in for the sweep against conference pro Lindenwood here at the Bolasini Center. Tigers looking to take three of four against the Lady Lions this year. It was a scoreless game until the late in the third, under 10 minutes to play. Mackenzie Stone the shot. Reagan Rust is there to put in the rebound. Her first goal on the season, a big one, as RIT took a 1-0 lead. Jenna DeYoung was spectacular for the second straight day in the net. Yesterday, she recorded her first collegiate shutout. Today, she got her second, stopping all 26 shots she faced. Scott McDonald on pregame live last night, sporting the orange vest. He picks up career win number 200. RIT holds on for the 1-0 win. It's definitely got to be the vest for Coach McDonald and the Tigers. So here is how it shakes out. In the College Hockey America standings, Robert Morris, who RIT faces in a few weeks, is on top with 22 points, followed by Syracuse. RIT sits in fifth place with 10 points after back-to-back -back victories. Today, they are on a roll. Good luck to the Tigers the rest of the way. Joined now by Commissioner of College Hockey America and Atlantic Hockey, home to both RIT men's and women's teams. Bob DeGregario. Bob, thanks so much for joining us here tonight. You make a few visits to Rochester each year. What makes RIT so important to your league? Well, I think, you know, one of the reasons we went after RIT to join in both the men's and the women's league was their history in hockey sure. and their commitment to the hockey. Uh, the years it was Division Two, II, Division Three, and they came to us, we had great meetings, they were, they were solid on making the commitment to go to Division I, and they obviously by the new facility and their yeah. commitment to both their men's and women's hockey program have done that, and they've been a great member for the league. And, and the Atlantic, Atlantic right. Hockey League uh, has found a home here in Rochester since 2007 with the postseason tournament. You signed a deal in the offseason or just a month ago that you're going to keep it here through the 2018-19 season. Why is Rochester a good fit for the league tournament? And have you given any thought to maybe rotating it once again now that teams like Sacred Heart and AIC are playing in pro rinks? Well, the problem with that is you'd have to do predetermined sites. Sure. And what we've done for the past seven years is we've started to build a history and a, a track record at, uh, at uh, um, the Blue Cross Arena in sure. Rochester. One of the reasons, to be perfectly honest, Kevin, when we came here, we had gone to other venues. And the fact that the city of Rochester, Jeff Hawkins and people at the Blue Cross Arena offered us a great deal and they have bent over backwards time and time again. Uh, the Monroe County Sports Commission, uh, Rich Mackey and Dennis and all the people from there over the years have done a great job for us. The community has reached out uh, and, and it's gotten bigger and the tournament is growing. And, and it doesn't make any difference where we are. You know, people say, well, if RIT isn't in the tournament, then it's going to hurt attendance. Sure. That would be if we had it, as you suggested, at Sacred Heart's new facility and they weren't in it and we brought in Air Force and, you know, three other teams, we might have the same problem. But then we would be faced with that every year. What we're trying to do in Rochester is it's Division I college ice hockey. You can see it here every weekend that RIT is home. But to get the whole league playoff championship in Rochester with the winning winner of that tournament going on to the NCA is is the important. And what we've tried to do is build it into an event yeah. with the support of the city, and it's working. And, and, and RIT fans love having it here. I know they do, especially if the Tigers get downtown. Uh, quickly, looking at the Atlantic Hockey Conference, what about the parity? The coaches are even talking about they've never seen it this tight. What do you uh, think? Well, I, I, I think may not be as this tight, but it's always been tight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, but the parity, I mean, you look at where uh, RIT and Bentley are. Bentley's two points Points. away from them. Sure. And they're four points away from, you know, getting up into second or third place and having to buy in the first round. So, and you look today, Canisius won, so they've moved into uh, first, place. first place by themselves, but Air Force is playing tonight. Right. If they win again or they don't win. So everybody is bunched together, which is good for the league. And you have to give credit to the directors of the league. When they came together with the league and they formed the league, they did a strategic plan. And part of that plan was they were going to leave nobody 
behind. Sure. So they brought the league, everybody along together. Scholarships moved, new facility at RIT, Bentley University building a brand new facility, AIC making a commitment to play at the Mass Mutual Center, yep. uh, Sacred Heart playing at the Webster Bank, everybody changing lighting, new dashboards here, new seating here, everybody's investing in their hockey program and trying to make it better. And in addition, they've now gone to 18 scholarships. Yep. Yep. So they will be the same as every Division I hockey league. We will be at the max, everybody in four years. So we're on equal footing now. So there's no more negative recruiting against Atlanta hockey by saying, well, that's the cost containment league. That's the league that doesn't have all the scholarships. We're as good as everybody else. And we've been proving it on the ice. Yep. If you look at this year's non-league uh, competition. This is our best year since the conception of the league against non-league opponents. And we're looking forward to it the rest of the way. Thanks so I much for so. joining us here tonight on Pre-Game Live. We look forward to the rest of the season in both conferences. Well, still to come on the show here tonight, you're looking at what was the only RIT retired jersey. We'll tell you who joined Christine Pierce in that exclusive club next. You're watching RIT Sports Zone Pre-Game Live. Back here on RIT Sports Zone pregame live face off between Bentley and RIT at 7.05. Two guys that will have to call for us as always here tonight Gene Battaglia and John DeTulio. Oh, guys, we need a win here tonight if you're an RIT fan. Yeah, looking for the sweep tonight, or the split, Kevin, after last night losing to Bentley. And, you know, John, the injury is certainly you can use that yeah. as an excuse, but the fact is it's showing up in special teams when you don't have the Norrishes on the power yep. play, when you don't have a Todd Skirving on penalty kill, when you don't have an Alex Bromfontaine on penalty kill, the injuries are hurting this team. There's no question. And when you look at the power play or the penalty kill, the power play opportunity for the opponents, they've been lighting the lamp at an enormous clip. Guy's going to have to step up. You're going to have to block shots. You're going to have to get down and dirty. Get your keister on the ice and start blocking some shots. they got to play desperate tonight. If RIT plays desperate, great energy, they should get the win. The Tigers, uh, what do they have to do tonight, John? Well, it starts, I mean, it's very simple. The penalty kill, eight of the last 13 power play opportunities have come up with a goal. I'm talking about opponents, including four of the last five. Max French, if you're Bentley, he's been frying opponents, French frying opponents his entire career. 60 career goals, one of their best players. Keep him in check. If you're Bentley, you need him to have a big game. And I think to get their mojo and confidence, 
fast start is a must tonight for Wayne Wilson's team. John, are you surprised at all? Uh, Polino is not getting the call in goal. For, it's, they're going back to Jason Argue for Benton. Wayne was even surprised talking with him. you got to remember, they beat Argue back in October. Beat him bad. I thought the freshman goalie was sensational last night. So that could even give the Tigers a boost, knowing that they solved him already back in late October. Puck drop coming up at 7.05. Kevin, we can't wait tonight to see if the Tigers can snap this losing streak. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. We'll see you then, guys. Thanks so much. Well, RIT has been competing athletically since the early 1900s. Over those last 100-plus years, many of the Tigers' best have been honored with enshrinement into the school's Sports Hall of Fame. But you might be surprised to know that over that span, only one student athlete has ever had their, school, their jersey retired by the school. That was the case until today. Craig Jones didn't gravitate to the game of basketball until he got to Webster High School. I didn't really play um, that much basketball until I was maybe a sophomore in high school. And then I started playing and um, kind of doing well at it. I think my senior year in high school, um, I made all greater Rochester. And some of the local high school coaches didn't think I was that deserving of, of that. So I think that kind of motivated me. But in his first season at RIT, Jones only averaged about eight points and six rebounds a game. The most dramatic improvement I've ever seen in a player here at RIT was between his freshman and sophomore year. And he just got in the gym, he got in the weight room, he played against the very best around here, and he came back as a sophomore, uh, obviously as an All-American. His career took off from there. Jones was a three-time All-American and earned Division III Player of the Year honors in 1996, en route to becoming RIT's all-time leader in points and rebounds. Did you expect him to have the sort of career that he ended up having here at RIT? Uh, honestly, no. If you ever watch Craig play, whether it be in college or high school, he might not impress you with all the, you know, dazzle and, and glitz. Uh, he just got the job done. How much do those records mean to you? It's an honor for our whole team to have those because, you know, we played together and they were a huge part of my success. And so I think the records are, are nice to have. I don't think they'll, they'll always be there. You know, as Coach McVean said, there is a player right now playing that might come pretty close to that scoring record. So, um, you know, records are made to be broken and it's nice, but I don't expect them to be there, you know, years down the road. Earlier today at the Clark Gym in front of his former coach, teammates, family, and Tiger faithful, Craig Jones's number 33 jersey was retired. I think it's the most prestigious honor to, for an athlete to have. Um, you know, the three-time All-Americans, Player of the Year. I think it's, 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 it's the most prestigious honor to have to, for your university to think that much of you to retire your jersey. To me, to retire someone's jersey, um, that, is, that is really something special. Uh, it's not going to happen every year, um, and it's taken this long to, to really have someone that I felt and, and the staff and the committee felt was certainly more than deserving. It's really gratifying to me to see those guys come back. Uh, it's uh, hard to believe it's been 20 years uh, with their families, uh, and uh, that's kind of what it's all about. Uh, you know, seeing alumni being successful um, and to honor one of our very best and to have uh, those people come back will be a very special day. Well, it's special. Um, as I said, probably the biggest things I miss is college and, and college basketball, and we were a family, and I just think it's nice that, um, that we're all going to get back together again. Oh, great RIT moment right there. Our congratulations to Craig Jones, the Webster native, becomes the first RIT male athlete to have his jersey retired. Former RIT women's hockey standout Christine Pierce is the only female to have her jersey retired. Craig Jones, oh, he had quite a career, a three-time All-American, Division III's Player of the Year in 1996, and he still holds the school's all-time scoring and rebound records now 20 years after he graduated, although somebody's getting close to that scoring record this year. Well, it's been a busy day for RIT Athletics, and we're not finished yet. We're getting close to the nightcap as face-off nears between RIT and Bentley. The lights are out, and we're headed back upstairs to John and Gene next. The Glow Sticks, ready to go. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live.
Back here at the Policini Center on the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology where it's not only Sports Zone Night, but the students are getting in free tonight thanks to Student Affairs. Well, if you haven't been out to the Policini Center yet this year, time is running out on you. Only four regular season games remain after tonight on the schedule as Holy Cross and Air Force come to town in February. You can purchase tickets for as low as $6 by visiting the Policini Center box office by calling 475-4121 or go online to rithockey.com. Tigers visit Robert Morris next weekend, so that we won't be back with you until February 10th and 11th when the Tigers host the Crusaders of Holy Cross. Our coverage kicks off at 6.30 with RIT Sports Zone pregame live presented by Taylor the Builders on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel 26. Well, that does it for yet another edition of RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Thanks so much for watching. Up next, John, Gene, and Stacy join us as RIT wraps up its series with Bentley. Enjoy the game, everyone. RIT Sports Zone Live begins now. <laughs>